How you doing, people? Welcome back to another ESO build video. Today is a brand new template build to the channel, specifically designed for the Infinite Archive in update 43 and upwards. This is a template build called Big Booms, and it's kind of riding off the back of the original Off Balance build, but with some not too dramatic changes to make it perform much, much better in that particular area. Heightened survivability, much more damage in um, trash pulls and very, very big explosions going off that stagger into other explosions and then more explosions and then you get the idea. That's why it's called big booms. They just go off and off and off and off and it escalates dramatically. Now, of course, the Infinite Archive has variables in there, especially buffs and bonuses that do not exist anywhere else in the game. So that is why we built this particular way so that we can take advantage of those if we're lucky. Now, I know people go for focused efforts and all that good stuff, and you should do, but without it, it's still very, very strong regardless of the round you're on. More of that will make sense as we go, but the idea is to stack everything, hit everything, they go boom, not just by one set going boom, multiple stacking bonuses. So first of all, we're going to go into the stats, just put our buff on real quick, got to make sure that's running, and also the potion which is also on. We are on 33.9k max Magicka, 24.2k max Health, and 13.6k max Stamina. Bear in mind, obviously, in the Infinite Archive, that can go up dramatically if you get buffs and bonuses to enhance them. We are on 917 Mag Recovery, 309 Health Recovery, and 797 Stam Recovery. Again, those bonuses can go up. And, of course, Weapon and Spell Damage is... We're actually scaling off for of Spell Damage because it happens to be our highest one, is 4786. Bear in mind, your damage stats are scaled off of your highest, not necessarily a specific. So you can go spell damage or weapon damage, doesn't make a difference, it just means whichever one is higher is the one that will contribute. So again, we are pushing for spell damage overall, but if you went weapon damage, then it would be the same. Now we've got 47.2% crit chance, that can be enhanced if you have a sorcerer in your group, and if you get buffs and bonuses in the infinite archive. And again, our spell pen is 1639, that is actually a bit higher than that if you consider your destruction staff skills, lights, heavies, etc. and wall of elements because of the passive bonus we get in there, and also you can enhance that as well. Now, spell resistance and physical resistance, again, can go up. We've got currently 2263, 2 for the spell, and 19596 for physical. If you've got someone in your group giving you minor resolve, that can go up, and there are other ways to enhance that further if you choose. But that's our basic stat for now. Again, Infinite Archive can change dramatically based on RNG. Luck. 64 points into Max Magicka. Max health, max magicka food. Now, bear in mind that is actually just short of 5k max health and just under 5k max magicka. So just over 5k max health, just under 5k max mag. That does give us flat bonuses with no recovery. So you will have to heavy attack occasionally to keep your resources up unless you get uh, recovery bonuses along the way. You shouldn't struggle too much in the trash rooms because if you kill stuff, you'll get stuff back based on our champion points. But if you do want to use the uh, citrus fillet stuff, then of course you can, but you are going to have less health and less damage for the sake of recovery. Personally speaking, the damage you can do from the heavy attacks, especially if something goes off balance anyway, is absolutely fine. So you don't need to change this. And all you can do is just keep up heavies while getting your resources back. And you can just fire out Jesus beams afterwards if you need, really need to. You shouldn't run out too often, but if you are, focus on more heavies. Again, the food is up to you. No, I don't recommend sugar skulls. It's crap for this setup. Thief, Mundestone, and the rest is just basic. It just stays with us. We've got Prophecy and Savagery all the time. We've got Gallop all the time. The rest of the buffs you're going to have to maintain. So, which buffs are we using? So, skills, buffs, bonuses, etc. are very important. There is a class guide for the Templar on the channel. If you want to look at that now, you can do. And that will make sense for these uh, in a, a more descriptive way. I'm going to go over these kind of quickly, just in case people already know what to do. And slightly explain them for people that don't. Basically, all the information is in the class guide. But, Purifying Light, third ability to unlock in the Dawn's Wrath skill line. You attach it to the target, it puts a light on the head, and after six seconds it goes bang. The more damage you do to the target, the more damage this will do. It kind of collects it and then pops at the end. And if it finishes, or you reapply it, because you can only have one at a time, it will drop a healing circle on the ground for 10 seconds and heal you and allies every two seconds for its duration. Really, really helpful. Make sure one of these is active at all times. Not only for the damage, but for the heal as well. 28 meter range as well, so you can fire it from a long, long distance. Channeled Acceleration is actually a choice. This is in the Sigic Order skill line, or the Shipjik Order, however you want to pronounce it. Yes, I know that's not real. That's just how we say it. Basically, Morph Accelerate to Channeled Acceleration. Apply this before a round, and you've got a whole minute of minor force. Very, very useful. And you've got Major Expedition at the beginning as well, so you can get in nice and quick. This does channel, however, so you do have to charge it up for 1.3 seconds and you can't block while doing so, otherwise you'll cancel the skill. So bear in, bear in mind, you need to make sure you're safe when you apply this. 
The other version of Minor Force you can use, no, I don't recommend Beast Trap. Two reasons. One, your stamina, you're going to need it. Two, you'll miss most of the time because there's too much going on too quickly. But the other one you can use is actually from Scribing, and this is in the Mages Guild skill line, and we've got Warding Contingency. Now, what we've done here is we've acquired the damage shield for the group, the class affix as well, which gives us extra weapon and spell damage and resistances, and it is enhanced if we're standing on our rune, which you'll know about more later, and we get Minor Force for 22 seconds. The Minor Force gives us crit damage. That's why we've taken that buff. We do need it. This needs to be activated, then your next skill will fire all the buffs and bonuses. It's tricky, you can spam it on its own, or you can fire it and then fire something else afterwards, but this will give your group a damage shield and maintain that buff at the same time. It takes a while to unlock, if you want to use it, it's really, really helpful. If not, then you can just use channel acceleration. Basically how this fires is this, pre-buff it, and then any skill you use fires a damage shield for you and the group. Looks cool as fuck, gives you minor force, and you can spam it while holding block if you really need to. It's quite helpful. It can trigger itself if you double cast it. But again, channeled acceleration is actually pretty much foolproof and it does carry Sigic Order passive. So just channel it. One minute worth of minor force and you're off. Yes, that other thing did fire and it's not supposed to. Now, next up is Jesus Beam. Radiant Glory is the one we've chosen. You need to go to the bottom of the Dawn's Wrath skill line. Starts off as Radiant Destruction, morph it to Radiant Glory. Bear in mind, Oppression does 500% extra damage. This one does 480% extra damage. So there's only a small difference there. And one crit on or off can make this hit almost the same damage. Basically, under 40% health, you need to start firing this. I know it says 50, but the sweet spot for this particular build for when your damage starts to dip and then when this can gain is 40%. Any boss, add whatever, hit him with the Jesus Beam. During its channel, you'll do damage every tick. You'll get 480 magic back. Um, per tick depending on how low the health is you'll do more damage depending on how low the health is and the damage you do you will heal back 17% of the damage inflicted to yourself bear in mind that can be enhanced with healing dumb bonuses so that can go up quite a lot also based on the setup our Jesus beam actually heals us twice if you would uh, consider that we've got an extra 3% healing dumb bonus which you will have along the way we can put this up to 20% and that will mean you get 20% healing per damage tick twice. If you understand the game, you know where I'm going with that. But we'll get to that when we get to the gear. Absolutely insane. Your execute heals you. Puncture and sweeps is your main spammable. This is in the Adric Spear skill line. Basically, you start off as puncture and strikes. Morph it to sweeps. This costs magicka. And in error of effect, frontal error of effect in front of you, you will actually do damage. And the closest target will take the most damage. But... It's magic damage over and over and over. It can apply overcharge status if you have lucky status chance um, or if you have an enhanced status chance from your focused efforts if you're lucky. And also it snares the enemies. But you also heal for 34% of the damage done. And if you're paying attention to what I said earlier, with a 20% extra heal from damage done, that will also happen to this as well. So you get the 34% and you stack also on top of that from a special item we are using. Again, no spoilers. We'll come to that in a bit. So keep this up all the time as your main spammable. Smash it into a crowd, and then when the health goes low, use a Jesus Beam on top. Inner Light stays on the bar, gives us major savagery and prophecy, and it increases our weapons. Uh, sorry, it increases our maximum magicka all the time. Never press it. You don't need to. Just leave it there. Flawless Dawnbreaker, again, is also something for passives. We just leave it there. While it is on the bar, we can change the color of it so it looks cool, we will gain bonuses from the fight skill passives um, skills themselves. You don't have to activate this. If you want to for a quick fix and just do some damage, physical damage over time and a quick burst and some weapon to spell damage increase, you can. It's really, really cheap. But strictly speaking, I would stick to the back bar ultimate because it is insane and it feeds itself ulti after you fire it. We'll come to that in a moment. This is here just for stats. If you want to use it, you can, but it's mostly there just for stats or an emergency. In a light on the back bar as well, we've got uh, Prophecy and Savagery on both bars. We've also got max magicka increase on both bars this doesn't carry over so you are gonna have to double bar this if you want to i'm sure later it will allow for it to be double barred but at the moment it is not next up is elemental blockade so this is the wall of elements morph to unstable wall of elements it's not the blockade it's the the other one this one actually explodes the other one lasts longer this one goes bang now we've deliberately chosen an ice staff on the back bar so we can take advantage of some passives but basically, this will do ice damage on the ground every tick. And enemies that are standing inside of it, if they are chilled, which is a status effect from it, will be affected with minor breach. 
The reason, again, we've chosen the Frost one is because of the benefits to the passives. We can actually use this as a tanky weapon. And if you apply it, it gives your damage shield to you and your allies, which protects you against projectiles. And when it finishes or you reapply it and it goes boom, you get another one. So it's a protective weapon that does do damage on the ground. Technically speaking, we don't need this to do lots of damage. We just need it to do damage every one second in damage over time. And that's exactly what it does. Again, we'll get to the passives in a bit, but we've gone frost on the back. You can go lightning or fire if you really want to, but once you get to really, really high arcs, the damage this does is going to be irrelevant. The reason we need it is for the ticks and the protection. Solar Barrage is the Dawn's Wrath skill line. Second ability to unlock starts off as Solar Flare, more for the Barrage. Activate this and you will basically do damage every two seconds in area of effect. But at the same time, you will also grant yourself in power. So if you do heavy attack, if your resources are low or you just want to maintain them, then your heavy attacks will do 70% more damage and your class abilities now do 5% more damage for the duration. So while this is active, your jabs, your Jesus Beam, your Purifying Light all hit harder. So maintain that at all times. Stay close to do the damage, but maintain it as a buff. Channeled Focus is in the Restore and Light skill line. Last one you unlock, morph it from Rune to Channeled. This will cost Magicka initially, but during its duration, it will give you magic back. And it will heal you every second as well. Bear in mind, you get a resistance bonus, which is major resolve. It's very important to maintain. And if you stand inside of this, your heal from this will be higher. It's scaled off of your maximum health. So the more health you have, the bigger the heal. So if you really want to protect yourself, stand inside of it. But if you just want to maintain a resistance buff, don't let it run out. Blazing Spear, finally, before we get to the ultimate, Adric Spear skill line starts off as Spear Shards, morph it to Blazing Spear. Fire this into the air, lands on the target or wherever you place it, and does magic damage every one second. It's not a huge amount of damage, but the initial hit is quite nice, and it does do damage over time, which is what we need in Air of Effect. Enemies hit by the initial hit are immobilized, however, so this is an Air of Effect immobilization skill, which was changed. It didn't used to do that. Templars now have an Air of Effect immobilization skill. If your allies are in the room and they take a synergy, they will actually get Magicka back or Stamina back, whichever one of their main resource pools are highest at maximum stats. Bear in mind that is very specific. If they have a higher stam bar than mag, they'll get stam. If they have a higher mag bar than stam, they'll get mag. It doesn't matter how much it's in the bar. Percentage-wise, it matters which one is the highest stat. So that's resource gain for them. Basically, throw it on the floor, let it run out, and then fire it again. Shooting Star, Major Skill skill line. If you don't have this, then just use Nova from the Dawn's Wrath skill line. But if you do have this, this is amazing. Meteor, morph to Shooting Star. You need Major Skill 10. Fire at the target. It will go bang. Put damage over time on the ground. Does fire damage. Stuns them. Knocks them down, etc. Everything you want is in this skill. <gasps> and one more thing. If you hit a target, they will give you back 12 ultimate. If you hit two targets, that's 24. If you hit three, it's 36. If you hit four, it's 48. You get the idea. The more targets you hit, the more ulti you get back. You can basically spam this in a crowd. It is feckin' stupid. And until they adjust it, we're going to use it. So that is bonkers. Use that ultimate all the time. Dawnbreaker is there for passives. Speaking of which, it's time for passives. So you're going to want to get all of these. Again, they're in the class, guys, so you can make more sense of them or you can read up or listen to them in detail. But basically, you want these. We've got one Adric Spear ability on each bar. So that means no matter where we are, we always get the crit damage for doing Adric Spear uh, damage. But for most of all, having them on the bar. So crit damage there, crit damage there. Easy peasy. And you increase the damage to blocking targets. You gain minor protection for six seconds, which reduces your damage taken by 5% for each time you activate one of these abilities. So again, either that or that. So you've got protection bonus just for stab and stuff. When you deal damage, you generate a stack of burn and light for three seconds. After reaching four stacks, you go boom and do damage to that target. This can stack every once, every half a second and scales off of your highest offensive stats. So spell damage and magicka for us. Basically, just keep jabbing stuff and keep your spear up and you'll do extra damage for free. This will increase our weapon and spell damage and physical and spell resistance just for having it, so get it. Dawn's Wrath, of course, increases duration of the abilities on this particular skill line. This one is being used, so we do want that. Solar Prism, aka Nova, isn't being used right now, but if you do have that instead of um, Meteor, that's absolutely fine. This will buff it. Casting a Dawn's Wrath ability will give you three ultimate, and this can happen a minimum of at least once every six seconds. So if you spam it too much, it won't work, but once every six it will. Lucky for you, this last six seconds so if you just reapply every time it runs out that's easy free ultimate or if you just maintain jesus beams it's going to happen indefinitely anyway um when you cast a dawn's wrath ability you gain minus sorcery this also applies to your group so 20 seconds worth of increased 10 percent spell damage which is why our spell damage is higher than our weapon even though the build has got the same weapon of spell damage throughout 
Also, it reduces health, stamina, and magicka costs, and ultimate costs for your abilities, regardless of where they come from. Doesn't have to be class. Increases your healing effects from restoring light abilities by up to 12% in proportion to the severity of the target's wounds. So, standing in this and getting healed, it will get stronger the lower your health. While standing in your rune, you um, also have minor mending. So, if you stood in this, and you look at your Jesus Beam now, it's not 17%, it's now 19%. Ah, ha, ha. Your heals got stronger. Standing in it. Also, you uh, increase the amount of damage you can block for the duration. While you are channeling your ulti, you get stuff back, which is a feck ton of resistances. That only lasts during the channel. We don't actually use it. And when you heal an ally under 50% health or restore and light ability, you grant them two ultimate. That also applies to you. So if you heal from the rune while low health, you will get ulti. The other part, again, useless. You would get a shit ton of resistances. Actually cap on top of what you've got, but we don't use that ulti. Um, and also you res people faster. Fastest resurrection in the game outside of a Necro ulti. Fastest active res available. Resurrected allies return with 100% more health, so they're not ultra squishy. And you could get a soul gem filled for resing someone. So it costs you a soul gem, you get one back. Destro staff, we're using two Destros. We're using Lightning on the front, Ice on the back. So fully charged Lightning staff attacks do channel on target, doing damage per tick. And then they go boom at the end. The pop at the end is direct damage and it actually splashes with the same amount of damage as you've just done. Bear in mind, their resistances do count, so if they have lesser or higher resistances, the damage will be different. Now, fully charged heavy attacks with an ice staff gives you a damage shield, which scales off of your health. So if you want a free damage shield, heavy attack with a back bar. This increases the, uh, the pen bonus that you have, or ignores resistance of the enemy if you do lights, heavies, or destro staff ability damage. This increases your chance to apply status effects by 100% on top of the base value. So if it's 1% chance, it's now 2. If it's 5% chance, it's now 10. If it's 20, it's now 40, etc. Now, this is the important part. Lightning staves increase the damage done with direct damage and channeled effects. So this is direct. This is channeled. This is direct and channeled. This pop at the end is direct while the rest is damage over time. This is direct when it lands. So there's plenty of direct damage being done there as alongside your light attacks and the pop from your heavies. So it's very, very important that the lightning staff is utilized. And your ice staff, if you're on the back bar, you block with your magical bar instead and you get a 20% reduction to uh, damage while blocking and your block costs are down. You have tank passives on the back bar. So if you want to block something really, really big, be on that one. Also, when you kill an enemy, you get 3600 magical back if it's done with a destruction staff. Also, if you have the ice damage shield on you from the wall of elements or the heavy, you can actually get magical back once every 10 seconds as well if you get hit in the shield. So... Getting hit or doing uh, damage and getting kills also um, kind of stack up together to give you more resources back. We are using mostly medium armor. We've got one light piece, which um, obviously you get some nice bonuses here. So make sure you get all these passives. You can read through them in your own time, but it's basically crit chance, penetration, and recovery bonuses there. And reduction to cost if they cost magic. We're all medium for the rest of it because we are using two medium sets. Now, I know that would mess with your resources, but since we're using staves, you can heavy attack and get your resources back. It's nice and easy. Plus, if you get kills, you get resources back anyway. And there's a new buff in the Infinite Archive that will give you resources back for getting kills. So if you get those stacked up and you've got a nice recovery bonus, you won't actually run out. But here you've got crit damage, stam recovery, um, extra reduction to cost to dodge roll, movement speed, weapon and spell damage. You've got all damagey and evasive stuff here. Plus, since we're medium, we have higher resistances than we would if we were light. You do have to be active, though. Your dodge roll reduction to cost is a bonus that you'll only benefit from if you actually dodge roll. So... It's a passive, but you've got to do something to, to actually enjoy it. We're not using any heavy um, because we've got one light shoulder and the armor is all medium. Uh, Fighters Guild, you are going to want these passives. We are not using Barb Trap, but we are putting Flawless Stormbreaker on the bar. Um, this will give you increased weapon and spell damage for having it on the bar. This will give you ultimate whenever you kill an enemy on this bar. And this will increase the damage of these skills. This bonus doubles against players that are vampires or werewolves, but we're not in PvP, so it's kind of irrelevant. Just get it for the extra damage on the skill, just in case you ever use it. Mage's Guild, obviously very important. Get every single one of these. They will benefit you. They'll make the duration of Meteor last longer. They'll give you extra bonuses here for extra Magicka and Magicka Recovery for having Mage's Guild on your bar. We've got two on the back bar, so we've got 4% there. And above all, you'll get Empower if you use a Mage's Guild ability. So drop a Meteor, you've got Empower just in case your um, Channel Focus, not Channel Focus, Solar Barrage ran out. Technically speaking, you probably will never need that because you should be able to maintain it anyway, but it's just in case. Get all the passives as soon as you can and make sure you get Meteor on your bar. 
Undaunted is very important. You are going to want to take every synergy you can see because synergies give you resources back regardless of their actual effect themselves. Take every single one. And because we're using two different types of armor, we've got a 4% increase to all of our stats. Health, magic, and stamina. You could argue, oh, what about the heavy one? Because that'll give you six. Yes, it will, but we can't fit that. Now, we've got uh, the race one left, basically. We are a Breton. Yes, a Breton. So, maximum magicka, same as a high elf. We do have increased resistances, which is really helpful to our spell resistance. This effect is doubled if you are afflicted with burn and chilled or concussed. If you get hit with status, that doubles. High resistances. Infinite Archive scales. It's the only content in the game that gets more difficult the longer you play. Everything else stays the same level. So you are going to need resistances. Also, increased mag recovery. That helps alongside our lack of mag recovery because we're using medium, not light. And we reduce the magical cost of all of our abilities. We don't have the benefit of that for seven light pieces. We've only got one. So we'll take advantage of it from the race. Bear in mind, while I have done this on purpose to take advantage and kind of offset uh, some of the negatives that we have to make them a positive, you can use any race you like and the build will be fine. You'll have different stats, but it will still function. You might need to heavy attack a bit more, but the heavy attack is really beneficial anyway, so it's not a loss. Medicinal use. We are using spell pots because we don't have brutality and sorcery. And that will help us maintain our magical bar because we've got recovery bonuses from it and all that good stuff. So intellect, sorcery, prophecy. We don't need prophecy, but we've got it on the potions anyway. And happy days, we're done. You can use tripods if you want, but make sure that someone in your group is bringing major sorcery for you because otherwise you'll be lacking it. Technically speaking, if you've got a dragon knight in your room with molten armaments, that would be perfect because you can use tripods all day. But if you don't, you're going to need spell pots. Medicinal use will make your potions last longer than their cooldown. If it's grey, brilliant. If it's not grey, pop it now. You are wasting your, com your consumable buffs. You need them. I know people are really precious about their potions and they don't want to use them in case they run out of resources or they run out of potions and have to buy some more. If you want to be effective or if you want to be a better um, equipped for the situation, stop holding on to your potions like they are precious. They are there to be used, much like any buff on your build is to be used. If it's not grey, press it. The constant resource management is covered if you maintain the major bonuses you get from them. Don't save them until you're just low, because if you do, you're going to get 7k magicka back or so, and then you're going to use it in two skills. Maintain them, keep the recovery bonus up. It'll be much, much easier for you. Anyway, off that soapbox. Right, we have... The gear. So the idea is that you keep your dots down. Wrong button. And spam stuff in the middle. Spammy, 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 spam. While keeping up your minor force. Now, the damage over time that is being applied on the ground, jabs don't count by the way, is going to tick up over and over and over and over and over on multiple targets. That will make them go boom because we have a special set on. We have Azure Blight. This means basically once you get to 20 ticks per target, each one can go bang. They will do disease damage. If you are lucky enough with status chance, that will apply disease status. And the explosion turns into status, which then explodes by itself as well. If you want to know more about that, there is a status video on my channel explaining how it all works. But basically, disease status on target while applying maim will, not maim, defile, will also explode by itself and do extra damage. So you get a double pop out of this. Now, enemies nearby will take damage when it goes bang, but the more enemies, the more it scales, the more damage it does. And every 0.5 seconds, another target can go off if they've also reached 20 stacks. There's no cooldown on reapplying stacks. So dots down, keep them in the dots, and they'll go bang, 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 bang. Over and over and over. This is from the Lair of Masterlock dungeon. You want magical glyphs, and you want the trait on divines. But basically, you can put it on any parts of the body, because the whole build is medium apart from the shoulder. The shoulder is slime crawl because it's the highest crit chance bonus you can get from a one piece outside of mythics. When it comes to mythics, we're actually using the Ring of the Pale Order, Bloodthirsty, Mag Recovery, Weapon and Spell Damage. This will give you 20% of the damage you deal back as a heal. So the Jesus Beam gives us back almost 19% per tick. This gives us a further 20% per tick on top. Jabs will give us 34% per hit. This will give us a further 20% per hit. We are healing all the time. Get that as soon as possible. Now, the jewelry, we've got a Zerb Light on the jewelry, two pieces. We've got one piece on the body, which is up to you where you put it. And we've got the weapon, which counts as two pieces, which is a lightning staff with a poison damage glyph on it. The reason it's got poison on it is because that particular glyph does damage and it can apply a poison status effect if you're lucky. 
If you do so, you'll do damage over time, which is very, very strong with focused efforts, but the damage over time from poison status is actually an execute. So if you are light attack Jesus beam, light attack Jesus beam to kill something, you are using two different sources of execute damage at the same time, and both heal you. Now, the back bar weapon is the Maelstrom Perfected Ice Staff. It does not need to be perfected. If you're not on there that long, you won't take advantage of the pen bonus anyway. Infused with weapon and spell damage glyph, get uh, attuned enchantments as soon as you possibly can in Infinite Archive to elevate this. It's really, really helpful if you stack that up. But you basically keep your wall of elements down all the time, and this will allow it to do more damage. It's not a massive, massive game changer since the damage is not that important when you scale up really, really high, but it's a nice one to have and maintain regardless. You could double bar that if you wanted or something else, but there's really no need. If you don't have the Maelstrom weapon, though, you can get the normal one. It doesn't make a difference. The rest is Macabre Vintage. This is an Overland set from Gold Road. You can buy it from the market. You need five pieces. Weapon and spell damage four times. Massive amount of weapon and spell damage, including the last one being 150 instead of 129. When you kill a monster, they blow up. 50% of their maximum health is what you will do in area of effect damage in up to six meters. It's bleed damage as well. So if you're lucky, that can apply hemorrhage. Up to 2 point, sorry, 24k bleed damage, but that can scale depending on your stats. And this cannot critically strike, but it hits very, very hard. And it's a 0.5 second cooldown. So if you've got multiple targets, they can go bang, 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 bang. Now how this works. Azure Blight goes bang repeatedly while the target is alive. This goes bang when the target dies. So anyone near it is constantly taking explosion damage throughout the fight and then takes a final one when the enemy dies. It's very unlikely that the enemy is going to be alive next to it. It blows up entire rooms because you've got double explosions. Now we're going to go over the traits real quick again. Precise with poison, infused with weapon and spell damage, divines on absolutely everything with magicka, and then the jewelry is all bloodthirsty with magicka recovery, weapon and spell damage on each. Now what you need to do is understand the champion points because so, there's more coming. Champion points. All these white or yellowy ones, obviously, actually, we've got more stamina there. We can change that. We've got more magicka as well. Uh, nope, we've just got more stamina. So ignore that at the beginning. We don't have like 13k. We've got close to 14. But anyway, we need to take advantage of these small passive bonuses because they stay with us forever. Once you've got this here and this here, you'll unlock the two trees that you need. So we're taking advantage of raffle strikes which is your blue slottable. Deadly aim for single target damage, including your Jesus beam, your light attacks, and anything else that is a status effect. And master at arms, because we're using jabs left, right, and center, and most of the status are single target uh, direct anyway, apart from poison, uh, bleed, and burning. Now, we're also taking advantage of occult overload. This actually does oblivion damage in error of effect if something goes bang. So if something dies, this procs. So every enemy you kill, you're going to be able to do this in a 4 meter area of effect pop, which goes through resistances at least once per second and applies a random status effect to each enemy hit. So if there's 10 enemies in the room and they're all stacked together and one goes bang, everyone gets a status effect. Another one goes bang, everyone gets a status effect and so on and so forth. This can get very, very dramatic if you've got someone that can stack stuff well. Azure Blight goes boom, disease status effect pops and goes boom. Macabre goes boom because the enemy dies. Occult Overload goes boom because the enemy dies. And then that's Oblivion Damage plus status. You get the idea. There's a triple stack, quadruple stack of booms here. This is fucking mental if you can stack stuff well. So those four slottables are what you need. And you need to pay attention to where you put the enemies. Red Tree is relatively straightforward in comparison to a lot of the other builds. I mean, it's, it's extra health, extra armor. You don't need any prerequisites for that. And then take advantage of these two here. Siphon and spells and bloody renewal. So stamina back if you get killed. Kills, magicka back if you get kills. Really easy stuff. You are going to need to unlock this path here in order to get these. But once you're there, you're there. It's quite easy to get that early on. Just do half of these to get the uh, slotables unlocked. And then just work on the rest as you go. Green tree, piece of piss. This is uh, a chance. Well, this is an in increased duration on your food. This actually enhances the uh, effectiveness, if you like. Or the efficiency of your inventory basically you have a 10 percent chance to not use a potion use potions all the time you might not actually pop one so then you can use it twice this gives you a movement speed when you're out of combat that is useless in a fight but it's quite nice if you're going from one place to another in the infinite archive is not necessarily that important but i have that for everyday use anyway and also treasure hunter because you will be looting chests and you get higher quality loot from it green tree is quality of life red stuff is health armor and resources back blue Blue stuff is smashy, smashy, boom, boom. How do you play it? 
Quite simple, actually. Resistance buff. Maintain it at all times. If you want a bigger heal, stand in it. If you don't want a bigger heal, just keep up the resistance bonus. As you can see, there's quite a big difference there. Keep up minor force. It lasts a minute. And you get a speed buff at the beginning as well. Don't use it in the middle of trying to block something because you'll just have to cancel the skill. Bear in mind, obviously, I didn't go over Sigic Order, which is stupid. But we'll just go over this real quick. Get all these passives. They're nice and shiny. But if you are channeling, you will um, have this ability here, which is... Uh, where have you gone? You'll have 30% damage reduction while channeling. But also, if you block, you'll have a damage shield. Once it's been hit, you've got another 10 second time before you can do it again. But as you can see here, look at my bar. Damage shield, damage shield, damage shield. If it gets hit, it's gone. And then you've got 10 seconds worth of you can do it again after. That's actually quite helpful. But above all, minor force. Major resolve. Keep them up. The rest of the time, this spear and this wall must be on target. They both do damage every one second. That is two stacks per second for a Zerb Light. Also, you need to keep up your Purifying Light because one, it does loads and loads of damage. And two, when it's finished, there is a heal on the ground. As you can see, big heal. That and your rune combined is pretty strong. You heal off of all the damage you do anyway. As you can see, all the green stuff there, they are all heals. Every bit of damage I do is going to heal me forever. Now, another dot that you need to maintain is your Solar Flare or Solar Barrage. Once every two seconds, that's going to give you a tick. So this, this, and this. Three dots. Keep them up at all times. Apart from that, jab the crap out of stuff. And if it's low health, give it a Jesus Beam. I would tell you that there's a rotation, but there really isn't. Because the fights are going to be so fast with lots and lots of trash. You need to be quite active, fairly dynamic in your approach. So dots down, buffs up, jab the shit out of stuff, and Jesus Beam it if it's dying. That's pretty much it. Now... When it comes to fashion, I don't have a table. That's good. We're going to have to make a table. We're on PTS, people. Everything is free. Um, where have we gone? Do, 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 do. Clothing station. Brilliant. Yes, I know. You want to see the fashion. It's amazing. That's the wrong one. Not clothing station. Die station. Why don't you get good at the game? Oh, my God. Uh, 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 die station. There we go. You get a free blooper there, people. You're welcome. So, we are using... Some of it isn't actually changed, but we are using the Lucent Sentinel Helmet, which is in medium, I believe. No, that's heavy, actually. Then we've got the Annihilax Chosen Heavy Shoulders with the Night Hollow Staff. And on the back bar, we've got the Sigic Order Staff. So two staves, one set of shoulders and a helmet. This stuff here, the chest, the macabre stuff, is all default. That is what it looks like. Shiny as fuck. And the color we're using, apart from the black, which I think is Cold Harbor Ash. Could be wrong there. No, nope, it's down more black. Cold Harbor Ash is a bit lighter. We are using this shiny thing here. It looks like pink, but it's not. It's Blood Gold. Queen Maker Achievement. Blood Gold is that shiny, shiny gold we've got on there. That's pretty much it. So thank you very much for watching. A huge appreciate your support. If you are not subscribing already, hit that button. It's free. Furthermore, if you want to help support outside the channel, there are some links in the description. Enjoy the build. Tell me what you think in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.